Did you ever think about a fallback plan? Did you ever think about, well, if I didn't, like, I know that you want to become an NFL football player. So what if you don't become that? I am looking more like, like business and engineering, like, so I'll have something to go to if it doesn't happen. I chose to be a teacher, a sonographer, and a therapist. Depending on what we want to be, we have to have good pay. So it's not really, it's what we want to be, but we have to find good money, good income to afford all of this expenses, everything a year. So I'm still thinking right now, but I know that chef, unless I become really successful, I'm not going to get a, whole, a lot of money. So I had to change. Well, my backup plan has changed. Like at first I wanted to be like engineering. Mm -hmm. And even though I know how to do some of the stuff already, I don't really like to do it. And I do like to talk, um, like conversation. Um, I do like to like try to sell people things. So it was like business was a, was a good one. My backup plan would be probably either an engineer or graphic designer because to be a baseball player, usually you go to college before you get drafted and play baseball there, and you still have to major in something, which usually ends up being people's backup plans. So that's, uh, yeah, probably, probably a graphic designer. We are talking about real life here. We're talking about kids who are financially self-sufficient. We're talking about kids that aren't having to run back home to live with mom and dad because they made poor choices. We're talking about preparing people for success for real. When I was growing up, I was just a chef, cooking, that's it, right? But this course has actually taught me to expand on it. You know, I don't have to be a cook. I could be a, I own a restaurant. I could be a waiter, waitress, cashier. Actually, I expand on all these ideas, and then, like, it's actually based on cooking. It's to open up our minds to more jobs. I didn't even want to be a sonographer until I saw what a sonographer does and everything. Success 101 helps you figure out a lot of stuff that you wouldn't like about a job and a lot of stuff that you would like about a job. So it helps you find out that you don't like working too much hours extra or you like working outside, inside. It, it helps you see what you really want. There are a few, unfortunately, whose attitude is I just want to quit as soon as I can. And I think it would be unfair and false to say, oh, that never happens. It does. We run into kids who say, all I want to do is quit. 1.2 million students drop out of high school every year. I wanted to drop out. You did? Tell me about it. Why did you want to drop out? Because my biggest brother didn't finish school, and then he got kicked out. And then my other brother, he's in jail. And my other brother, he just got kicked out of school. So I was like, I already know I'm going to get kicked out of school later on, so I might as well give up now and not finish school. High school graduation reduces violent crime by 20%, property crime by 11%, and drug-related offenses by 12%. But what I love is the fact that other kids in my class are saying, you're crazy. Why do you want to quit? Make your plan. If someone was thinking about dropping out of school, I'd tell them it's a horrible decision. You could um, look at, actually, wages of people who went passed, got their high school diploma, and people who didn't, and it's a lot higher. It's a really bad choice. And also, if you complete high school, you feel accomplished. You, can, you feel like you could do anything. So that if this one child student does decide to quit, eight others decided I'm not going to quit. And having this program, in my opinion, is a big reason for that because they see the goal, they see the prize at the end of the race instead of just the fact that they have to keep running. For people considering dropping out, I think that it would help them not to drop out because it'll open up um, a wider variety of like um, jobs they can go through. Um, some people, of course, aren't like always the smartest, but there's other jobs out there for them that they might not know of. High school dropouts are 72% more likely to be unemployed. Do you think taking this course has influenced your decision on staying in school at all? Yes, because if I stay in school, I can get a better job, and then I won't be living like um, my oldest brother. In How does he live? Apartment over a candy house. <laughs> What's a candy house? Like not a candy house, but like a, a store. Mm -hmm. And like you know, there's a, 
a house on top of the store. Mm -hmm. That's where he lives and he works there at the candy store. Several of my kids have come to me and said, Mr. Griswold, dropping out's not even an option anymore. Uh, one student that I had said, I don't care if I have to live in a tent. I've got to get that diploma because that's the only way to get to the lifestyle I hope to have. And you want more? Yeah, I want way more than that. Are you going to do it? Yeah. I'm going to stay in school and go to college. We've noticed changes in dropout ratio as well as a significant change in ninth grade suspension rates. Why do you think that is? I think that's because our ninth graders have a, a purpose, a, um, a curriculum that they can really dig into that makes sense to them, that's relevant to them, and, and kind of gives them a plan for their future. And therefore, they know school needs to be part of that plan. And because it is so relevant to them, they, they dig in and, and make the best of it. I didn't know about money, period. And it's teaching me how to spend it. Um, so I don't go broke, end up on the streets, or living with my mom. Like, I didn't plan out for 10 years, I just planned one year at a time, one year at a time. Pass this year, pass the next year. The 10-year plan, a roadmap to success. The George Washington University's Freshman Transition Initiative believes all freshmen should take a course like Success 101, a course that culminates in the development of a 10-year plan. These quantitative and meaningful plans allow students to understand at a gut level the rewards of following through. Um, with the 10-year plan, um, the English teacher can um, revisit that 10-year plan online and say Johnny's not doing too well, not turning in his essays, and the teacher goes up and pulls his 10-year plan up and sees that he wanted to be a marine biologist. So come on in, Johnny. You know, I was looking at your 10-year plan. You wanted to be a marine biologist. Maybe you want to downgrade a little. Before, like, I was, I used to, like, mess around in that class a lot, like, some things I wouldn't take serious but everything I take to heart now because it's going to help me in the long run. And then that brings to mind all of the work they did about their budgeting and how the lifestyle they want and it's usually no way I want to be a marine biologist. If you get off track you still do what you need to get through not just quit and step out of the game. This course helped me with processes and stuff because when you're going for a goal you always have to make good choices. If you make a bad choice it could totally ruin your goal like you make a bad choice and it could totally head you down the wrong way towards your goal. So if you make good choices, it just sets you more on that pathway to your goal. Okay, well then you need to start working, you need to turn in your assignments, you need to come to school, and that's usually the quick picker-upper picker -upper that they need. Uh, they revisit it each year in English and they revisit it again in social studies or um, econ government courses.